Hello, my name is Linda McEnany, and welcome to my show. My guest today is Kristen Hilty. She is the director of Common Brown. It's an organization affiliated with the First United Methodist Church, but they're supported by many churches throughout Jefferson City. And Kristen, we're delighted to have you. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're a busy lady. <laughs> we have a lot going on, so thank you. Yeah. Tell our audience a little bit about the background of Common Ground. Sure, I'd love to. Thank you so much, Linda, for having me here today. My pleasure. Um, Common Ground started, um, I guess, gosh, we're five years old now, um, five years ago. Um, it kind of started um, as a desire of the downtown churches, uh, First United Methodist Church and some of the others, um, to, to collaborate and do ministry better, what they felt like um, was a gap in what they were providing to the community. Because of our location, uh, those downtown churches, we often get uh, requests for assistance um, because of the centralized area, and there were uh, we had two food pantries there at the time as well. Um, so our ministers were often uh, approached for requests for assistance, and none of them felt like they were doing it well or doing it, um, giving the the people who were asking for help, giving them the time that they needed, or or answering those questions um, as best as they could. So uh, they thought, uh, wouldn't it be great if we had a place um, that kind of we we hired somebody who who knew what they were doing, or, or we hope they knew what they were doing, and, um, and, and we send those requests there. We support it financially, um, but, but that place would be where we would send people to go, and they would get a lot more attention, a lot more um, uh, time, um, and, and resources, too. And is that the Common Ground Building, mm -hmm. as, as it's called? Okay. Yeah, that, that's So what kind of services are provided there. Sure, or out of sure. There. Well, our very first thing that we started with um, was our benevolence office. Like I mm -hmm. said, um, we were uh, we were wanting to centralize those services, um, and so they hired me. My background uh, is in social work. I have my master's in social work, so um, they wanted uh, to me to take on that responsibility, um, and that was the very first thing we've done. Uh, those services um, include temporary financial assistance to those in the community who need it. We help with things such as uh, rent, electricity, uh, water, sewer, um, uh temporary assistance for prescriptions until they get uh, long-term mm -hmm. services. Um, we'll even help with temporary lodging sometimes or, or bus passes uh, or bus tickets um, if, if people are stranded and need to oh, get sure. home. Oh, sure, and transportation is so important in our community. It really is, yeah. There's, we, can, we can talk about that a lot probably, but yeah, that is a huge need in our community. Um, so those are the things we immediately started with. We also have a community garden on site. Um, that has been supported by Grace Episcopal Church since we opened five Five years yeah. ago um, and that's growing we now have a sensory garden outside and a little lending library I love our little oh, blue box great. I call yeah. it yeah it's a great way to describe where to turn sure. <laughs> is that the little blue box well it sounds like you're collaborating with a lot of groups around mm -hmm. town tell us about that collaboration we sure do well, like I said common ground was really born out of collaboration we felt like we could do a lot more together than we could alone mm -hmm. um, so our churches were our first collaborators really we get a lot of funding from our churches um, all of I I am the only paid staff at Common Ground. All of the other staff is volunteer. Um, I have wonderful support from four different churches who come in four different days of the week. They answer my telephone for me um, and do that. Um, and those churches are First Christian? First Christian uh, Church uh, has supported us financially, right. and then First Baptist Church, uh, Grace Episcopal, right. and First Presbyterian, and First United Methodist provide wow. the staffing. So those five churches. Bless. Yeah, That's great. and also Central United Church of Christ has oh, been uh, okay. supportive. Well, we've also gotten support from uh, Quinn Chapel, uh, Memorial Baptist, and Wesley United Methodist. So there's several churches that through the years have supported us um, in different ways and yes. we're so appreciative In addition to having volunteers, which yeah. is all, always good. Right. Um, and then uh, we also um, collaborate um, with, with other agencies too, not just our churches. Um, being a social worker, that's just kind of my bread and butter. It's what I love sure. to do is work with others and network. Um, so we've developed some great relationships with other agencies. One of the services we provide now are computer classes, mm -hmm. and we do that through State Technical College. Um, they have kind of an ongoing computer class that they provide. We're one of their sites, um, and that's been a relationship that's been going for a couple of years now, and that's it's been really successful. Um, 
And we are also um, starting a new collaboration with Central Missouri Community Action. Um, they will be sending one of their family advocates on our site one day a week so we can hook families right up um, with, with, with those uh, I think deeper advocate services mm -hmm. that some could really benefit from. So we'll have that relationship starting soon. Um, and then just our work in the community as well, um, like through the Homelessness Task Force and, and Project Homeless Connect. Um, and by really the way, I, I want to hear about that. And, yeah. and I think those of you who may not be familiar, this is a wonderful effort. It's a couple of years old now? This will be our third, third year. Third year. Yeah. And, and you organized that effort, did you not? Um, I, I had a big role in the first one, yeah. There were right. a couple of us in the community, Edwin Cooper with Department of Mental Health, um, Sarah Nichols with CMCA, uh, and myself. We were the first three um, chair people. Oh, and Tyreka Brandon, when she was here with Salvation Army, she was instrumental in that too. Um, and, uh, and we were able to get um, some grant funding actually for our first one through the city, through the Community Development Block Grant, which mm -hmm. was uh, really helpful. That funded our first project, Homeless Connect. Um, last year, we depended mostly on community donations um, for the project, but it went really well. We're learning things every year, but I, um, it, it, it's honestly one of the things I'm most proud of since oh, we've gotten absolutely. here. Yeah. Well, describe to our audience what that effort is. It mm -hmm. takes place in October? Uh, yes, it's, it's been October every year. I think this year, I'm going to get the date wrong if I say it, but I believe it's October uh, 20th this coming year. Yeah. And there'll be information out right. in the community uh, as to the actual date. Yeah, so. right, right. I think it's the third Friday. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's basically a one-day event uh, where we try and provide as many resources as possible. Um, and to break those barriers to permanent housing. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people in our community um, uh, who, have, who are identified as homeless, not just street homeless, but we're also talking about people who are at the threat of, of, of homelessness, like either they've got an eviction notice um, or they're behind on their rent um, and, and they feel like that eviction notice is in the mail any day. Um, so we provide all those services that, to help them. What we have found is most helpful are the medical services. You know, we, um, we provide on-site medical and dental care um, and vision care um, when we've been able to get it and I think this year we're actually adding podiatry too so wow. it's just a one-day event where you know if you have trouble getting to these places or if you have trouble um, uh, kind of identifying what you need um, for housing it, it will be there that day so and it takes place downtown yeah it's downtown our three uh, three churches uh, first United Methodist Church First Baptist Church and First Christian Church they donate their space okay we so that's kind of in a cluster right yeah 300 in, East Capitol right. yeah that whole block and we, we close off the street um, we have about we have other church partners who donate their vans so they're running all day we we run people to the doctor we run people if they need you know more immediate attention we run them to the doctor uh, we ran them to uh, the pharmacy, we ran them to the social security office. I mean, we were just kind of, we were boot scooting all over town all day. But now, it, so what day of the week is it usually? It, it has changed each time actually right. because we, for various reasons, um, some of our agencies can't come on certain days. So, sure. so this year it will be on a Friday. Okay. Um, well, the reason I prompted, mm -hmm. prompted that is some of those like the state organizations are yeah. not open on the weekends. Exactly. So you would have to dovetail. We have to, to do it the, during the sure, week, yeah, sure. to, for all those agencies to be there. And that's one of our biggest requests, actually, our IDs. Um, uh, it is very hard. I know it's hard for some people to wrap their head around it, but it's, it is very hard for some people to, to cough up $11 for an ID. You know, when, you, when it's a choice mm -hmm. between buying something for lunch that day or getting an ID, you know, you're, you're gonna buy food. So, right. um, so that's one of our hugest needs that day are both birth certificates and IDs. So those offices have to be open. But we have, I think both years, we've had over 200 volunteers um, uh, wow. for that day. And that's, it, it's kind of an intentional model. Everybody who comes is given a personal escort through the day. Um, it's both to make them feel welcome Welcome, feel appreciated, but also to build a relationship. Um, like at Common Ground, we feel like the the the, the biggest thing that you can do um, to help someone in your community is to build a relationship right. with them. And, and by the way, we're going to take a break in just a minute. But mm -hmm. uh, the Common Ground building. Where is it located? It is at uh, 1015 East Atchison. It's just on the corner of Clark and East Atchison. Two-story brick building. Can't miss it. Can't, can't miss it. <laughs> well. We're going to come back, and when we come back, we'll take a break right now. We're going to be talking about homelessness and poverty in our community. Stay with us. We'll be right back. 
Hi, I'm Donna Scheidt with the Jefferson City Daycare Center. The Jefferson City Daycare Center is a licensed daycare with an accredited early childhood education program. We care for up to 99 children ages birth to eight, primarily from low and middle income families. The Jefferson City Daycare Center, providing quality early childhood education services in a caring environment. We're proud to be a United Way partner agency. Find us online at www.jcdcc.org and like us on Facebook. Lincoln University and JCTV are now on fiber optic cable courtesy of CenturyLink and Prism TV. Uninterrupted high quality Prism TV delivers JCTV to Jefferson City and Columbia on Channel 99. Big thanks and much appreciation to CenturyLink, their staff, and Prism TV from your friends at Lincoln University and JCTV. Jefferson City Access Television for Jefferson City and Columbia. Now on Prism TV, Channel 99. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. My guest today is Kristen Hilty. She is the director of Common Ground, uh, an organization within our community. And, and Kristen, I, I'm amazed when, when you've talked about some of the the opportunities that we kind of all take for granted, whether it's IDs or transportation or medical care or whatever, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. just amazed at that. And, and by the way, I should tell you, if you have questions with regards to Common Ground, you can call 573-522-4314 or you can visit their website, www.cgcb.org or you can visit them on Facebook too. So gives you every, a lot of opportunities, <laughs> a lot of good information out there. What do you perceive in our community as the main co uh, causes of poverty, Kristen? Um, I, can, I can think of three right off the top of my head with a couple sub-reasons that I'll get into, um, but uh, I call them the big three that I've seen. Um, one of those is um, access to health care. Um, mm -hmm. I was surprised myself actually to learn one of the biggest um, uh, the biggest reasons or, or one of the biggest factors that will push a family into poverty is um, health care expenses um, and we have uh, quite a few uninsured it's very difficult especially if you're an able-bodied uh, working adult mm -hmm. um, to get health insurance if you work at a low-skilled job um, and and those I see most often um, I will see people who put off um, health care decisions um, because they don't have insurance I spoke actually just um, two weeks ago with a, a woman who was a uh, pretty far in advanced stages of cancer um, and wow. she was putting it off because she didn't have insurance oh, wow. and she was really afraid of the bills so we talked through that uh, one of the other things I see um, is is a uh, affordable housing um, we have a high percentage of renters in our community um, and I believe I don't uh, I'm still looking for the numbers for this, but I believe a higher percentage than average of evictions in our community as well and once a family is evicted it sends them into a cycle they find it really hard to get out of um, because you have to pay another deposit on top of your first month's rent uh, you may have had to leave all of your furnishings back in your apartment because you couldn't ha afford to move them or you had no truck to move them so you're refurnishing an apartment um, and it just it's a huge 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 factor um, for, for why people are in poverty. And third, I think, is the, the lack of access to, uh, to what I call living wage jobs. Um, we have uh, low unemployment in Jeff City, um, and we have, um, we have jobs that are available, but jobs that actually will support a family at a living wage are very hard to come by, especially if you're a low-skilled worker. And I'm of the thought, the, the thought, like a lot of people are, if you work full-time for your family, you shouldn't need um, social supports. You should be able to support your family and, and, to, and to do okay. And, and our families are finding that that's pretty much impossible sometimes. Um, so that, but but on that coattail, like I said, I had some sub reasons. But along with the the, the lack of living wage jobs, um, I, we have workers who are willing to work, but what they don't have that support underneath, like transportation. Um, I have talked to so many people who have lost jobs because their rides fell through or because the bus didn't go out there and they couldn't find a ride. Um, and then child care too. Mm -hmm. Child care is very hard um, and, and affordable. Even if you get help from the state, there's still a copay that you pay. And for some women, some women that's kind of out of reach. So, um, so we have some jobs. We have good opportunities in Jeff City, but I feel like our workers don't have um, those those basic supports they need to be good workers, and right. they want to be. It's interesting that you you mentioned uh, what I have heard so many times: transportation, mm -hmm. child care, uh, a living wage, because that 
in our community is it may not be minimum wage, especially with a family. Right, right. And so uh, it's interesting because it is a reminder to all of us that we talk about the unemployment rate as being relatively good, quote, mm -hmm. quote, but that doesn't mean that we don't have a lot of people who just flat out cannot live on the, what their, their right. rate is. And we don't talk a lot about the underemployment numbers. No. Underemployment is closer to probably 9 or 10 percent, I've heard, in our area. Um, and something I've noticed, too, um, is uh, we, we have a really high reliance on, on contract employees and contract work. Even with our good factory work that used to be the, the avenue to middle class, they right. called it, um, those factory jobs are usually now controlled by um, temp agencies you know, who do a good job of getting people to work. But there's not that job security and there's not that, that full-time labor that you sometimes had being directly hired by a factory or by a, by a laborer. Instead, you kind of depend on these jobs. Um, I've had people come in and say, I was, I was let go today by the temp agency, and I said, did you know? Did they tell you? And I'm like, no, I didn't know. So, so they're, not, they're not beholden you know, to kind of um, uh, to treat their workers the same way that maybe the company would. Sure. So I find just a lot of insecurity um, in, in that market for those people who depend on those agencies. What are your plans going forward? I know you've got some ideas and, and some opportunities that you feel are, are uh, wonderful opportunities to help those in our community. Tell us about those. Yeah, I'd love to. This is kind of a this is a great year for Common Ground. Actually, um, we have been uh, we've been a five hundred one c three, but under the umbrella of our church, um, First Nine Methodist Church, which has been great. It's a it was a great way to grow and to start, um, but now we're feeling a few of the growing pains that a five year old would feel. And um, so this year, uh, we are in the process of kind of breaking off and becoming our own five hundred one c three. So that would open opportunities of funding for us. Hopefully, more staff. <laughs> and things, uh, things sure. of that nature, um, and uh, give us more revenue for some of the programs we've identified that we feel would be phenomenal in our community and help our, our neighbors in need. And that um, opens you up to some opportunity for grants, does yes, it not? Yes, it sure does, yeah. Okay. Sometimes, um, sometimes it's a little harder to get grants if you're a religious organization, Correct. so if right. you have that separation, it's a little sure. easier. Um, but one of the programs that we're most excited about is called our Families Forward Program. Um, as I told you, we help with financial assistance for rent. But what we were finding is that that $100, $200 toward rent or deposit, even paying for a full month's rent and working with our collaborators, Salvation Army, um, they actually had a program where they paid the first full month's rent. They were finding the same thing we did, that paying that amount of money doesn't get a family back up on their feet, especially if they've been homeless, especially mm -hmm. if they've been going through um, uh, an extended cycle of poverty. Um, we found that to best help a family, we needed to give them continued support. Um, and we felt the best way to do this was through Families Forward. It's a year-long program where we pay for a family's rent, uh, basically in full for the first three months. Then on a graduated basis, we reduce it by a quarter until at the end of the year, they are paying for that rent on their own. Um, and as part of that, they are working on self-identified goals that we've um, established at the beginning of the program and also working through uh, budgeting, family counseling classes, whatever else we feel like they need to supplement and, and to be ready to go on their own at the end of the year. So we have our first family graduating from our pilot program this year year and we would love to see that program expand by to at least 10 families in the next couple of years so so that's that's the transitional housing program mm -hmm. it, and approximately how many families do you think you'll be able to help or is that it just depends on funding, I guess, doesn't it? Yeah, not? it depends on funding. Again, that's kind of one of our goals um, for becoming our own organization. And we're also approaching other sponsors as well um, with this idea. Um, but like I said, our, our immediate goal is to do 10 families. Um, I feel like we could do more if the funding was there and with additional staff um, because I, I feel like it is such a great program. The thing that I, one of the things I love most about that program, it's, it's different from traditional transitional mm -hmm. housing models in that, um, that we work with the shelters primarily 
to pull families out so we can open up more space in the shelter for emergency needs while we move the families out into a transitional situation. So we're working again with agencies in the community, but we're also putting that family immediately in the home that they choose. It's not they're going to a transitional shelter, they're actually going to their home and supported in the home. So at the end of the year, they're not moving and experiencing that cost burden of a move. Sure. They are in their place um, and, and we're working with them where they will be. So I, I love that idea. Well, as you mentioned earlier, you know, there are a lot of co uh, costs that go along with evictions. Yes, uh, yeah. You know, leaving your location, mm -hmm. not being able to take your your mm -hmm. family heirlooms, yeah. quote, quote. To, in, in and other it's words, expensive it, for landlords, too. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, it's expensive for landlords. It's expensive for our families. Uh, poverty is expensive. So absolutely. we're trying to help alleviate that a little so bit. So you are working with the Salvation Army on this as yes, well. that well, the the whole idea for the uh, the Families Forward program came out of the Homelessness Task Force. Um, yes. One of the huge needs that we identified a couple of years ago, um, we felt like our emergency housing, most of that was met, um, but what we were finding is that we didn't have room for some of the families who were homeless. Salvation Army only has one family room, so if there was a family who needed, they were often kind of left out of the cold, mm -hmm. literally and figuratively. Mm -hmm. um, so, so the transitional units for, how, for families was, was a big need that came out of that. And then again, we worked with Salvation Army to kind of develop that conversation and say, um, let us know if you have a family, we'll work with them. And so that's kind of what we're growing out of and kind of fostering those relationships so we can help each other out. Well, and, and what in the discussion that I've had with uh, our friends at the Salvation Army, you know, many times, that shelter is full, yeah, and um, there isn't a place to even mm -hmm. put individuals, right. much less families. Yeah, I, yes, and and that uh, and that was part of our um, our thought too was give the spaces at a premium. So if we can handle the families that would take up more spaces, then we would alleviate that. There there are still. Uh, there are still problems of homelessness in Jeff City that aren't addressed by that, and that those are the ones that are the hardest to work on that we're still mm -hmm. continuing to talk about. Um, uh, our homelessness among our, our, uh, our population that may have mental illness, um, they require different attention. A lot of people with mental illness, sometimes they're not at the shelter because they, they simply can't stay there. They feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, living in a communal situation is not ideal for them. So e even, even if you move someone in in the shelter, they're often not there for very long because they right. can't stay there. So there are issues like that that we're trying to address, but we feel like this Families Forward is at least one facet of that, and we can free up some of the space that's Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Well, many times, you know, the, the shelter finds climate conditions or, or weather conditions mm -hmm. will increase and decrease yes. the number of people just based upon what you just said. Right. That we may have, and we do have some illness, mental illness in our community, and they go to the shelter as kind of a last resort mm -hmm. because it's too cold uh, for right. them to live outward. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is a, it's a wonderful program. Uh, this is an, a good opportunity for you to say to our audience, mm -hmm. what, what would help you the most right now? Sure. Uh, well, we're all always very appreciative of financial donations. Uh, last year, uh, with the support of our community, we were able to give away $55,000 in benevolence funding wow. over the course of the year. That included our transitional housing program, which costs us about 5000 per family. Mm -hmm. um, but otherwise, it was above and beyond that. And we do try and focus while, while we do, um, we both we help with utilities mm -hmm. like other agencies do in town because there's so much of a need, but we do try and focus on things that there, there aren't uh, many resources and services for, like water bills. We prioritize water bills and sewer bills because they're really the only mm -hmm. ones helping with those um, that I'm aware of. So, um, so we definitely want to prioritize those, but um, so, so we're helping people I know who are very appreciative and very thankful, and, um, and, and whenever we can do that, we're so happy. Um, we're always willing to take volunteers too in the garden and other things. So if anyone's interested, just contact me and we'll try and connect you up. And so. once again, the uh, way you can reach uh, Crystal and, and know by the, or Kristen and know about more about the uh, organization is you can call 573-522-4314 or you can go into their website, www.cgcb.org or you can check them out on Facebook. And it's uh, Common Ground Community Building, I think is yes, your Facebook. Yes, on Facebook, so. yes. Crystal, thank you for doing what you're doing. 
sure. such a valuable thing to our community and a valuable thing to so many who need the help. So Great. God bless you for what you're doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. And hopefully we'll see you again next time. Till that time, goodbye, goodbye, and